Assalamu alaikum today we are going to discuss about another important topic of gynecology that is normal menstrual cycle it is chapter number 3 of 10 teachers and uh, normal menstrual cycle actually starts from hypothalamic axis we just consider that it might contain uh, just hypothalamic pituitary and ovarian axis but no it is actually hypothalamic pituitary ovarian and uterine axis hypothalamic pituitary ovarian and uterine axis all of these things are running together if there are changes occurring in the hypothalamus then it also influences pituitary and similarly ovarian and uterine changes are also occurring simultaneously these all the things are running together and they together make the menstrual cycle and to bring the normal menstruation in females okay so just Just look at this picture that in front of you hypothalamus is shown. If I again draw hypothalamus for you, consider that consider that this is the hypothalamus, right? After that comes the pituitary stalk, and below it are the pituitary glands. Okay. so this is consider this is anterior pituitary and this is posterior pituitary in the hypothalamus there is a nucleus which is arcuate nucleus that plays a role in um, mainly in the menstrual cycle but there is another nucleus that is preoptic nucleus and both of these are responsible for releasing a factor and that factor is mainly the gonadotropin releasing factor gnrh or gnrf it is uh, called gonadotropin releasing hormone or factor both and when it comes into the anterior pituitary it signals the anterior pituitary and in response to it anterior pituitary then releases two hormones and those two hormones are fsh and lh it is written and this diagram that is um, shown in front of you here you can see that hypothalamus releases gonadotropin releasing hormone and then it influences the anterior pituitary anterior pituitary releases fsh and lh and fsh and lh goes and influences the ovaries of the females it is not only the uh, uh, we cannot say that fsh and lh are released only in females they both are released in males but mainly we are concerned with the menstrual cycle that occur only in the females so i am talking just about the females so fsh and lh are released and they act on the ovaries of the females and after After that ovaries re release what estrogen and progesterone mainly these are not ovaries which release we can say that in the ovaries inside the ovaries estrogen and progesterone are released they are mainly released from the follicles that are developing in the females during their normal menstrual cycle during the monthly changes that are occurring in the females in the ovaries in response to those changes that estrogen and progesterone are released we will discuss the structure separately from which estrogen and progesterone are released so i hope so that this a picture is now clear to you but i will show you some relations i will tell you about uh, some relations to you people that you must have to remember kyunki in cheezon mein in relations mein actually students ko confusion hoti hai aur in relations ko hi hum aage chalkar next to phases hongi ovarian cycle ki usme main discuss kar rahi hongi bar bar inhi ka naam le rahi hongi ki yahan par estrogen zyada ho raha hai kam ho raha hai to aapko in char panch relations ko yaad rakhna hai okay so तो वो रिलेशन क्या हैं उस रिलेशन में सबसे पहले आपने याद रखना है ईस्ट्रोजन कि ईस्ट्रोजन जब भी हमारे पास आता है राइट ईस्ट्रोजन जब भी आता है या ईस्ट्रोजन के लेवल्स जब भी ज़्यादा होंगे तो वो अल्टीमेटली एल के लेवल्स को भी ज़्यादा कर देंगे वो एल की प्रोडक्शन को भी बढ़ा देंगे नंबर टू थिंग इज़ कि जब ईस्ट्रोजन का लेवल कम होगा वेन एवर ईस्ट्रोजन लेवल्स डिक्रीज दे विल ऑल्सो रिड्यूस दी एल प्रोडक्शन एंड ऑन नंबर थ्री नंबर थर्ड रिलेशन इज दैट वेन एवर प्रोजेस्टिरोन लेवल्स डिक्रीज इट रिजल्ट इन इंक्रीज इन एफ एस एच एंड एल एच रिमेंबर बोथ एफ एस एच एंड एल एच विल इंक्रीज वेन एवर प्रोजेस्टिरोन लेवल्स आर डिक्रीज एंड सिमिलरली वेन एवर प्रोजेस्टिरोन लेवल्स विल इंक्रीज बोथ एफ एस एच एंड एल एच लेवल्स विल बी डिक्रीज सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर ऑल दीज रिलेशनशिप आई विल रिपीट इट बिकॉज दिस रिलेशनशिप दिस पर्टिकुलर रिलेशनशिप दैट आई हैव डिस्कस्ड हेयर इट अकर्स इन दैरी ओवोलेटरी फेज रिमेंबर इट अकर्स इन दैरी ओवोलेटरी फेज एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर रिलेशनशिप दिस वन ओके दिस वन प्रोजेस्ट्रोन लेवल्स इंक्रीज एंड एफ एस एच एंड एल एच डिक्रीज दिस अकर्स इन द्यूटियल फेज ऑफ दिन साइकिल सो आई विल बी रिपीटिंग ऑल दीज रिलेशनशिप इन द नेक्स्ट डिस्कशन सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इट वेरी क्लियरली in addition to all these hormones there are two other hormones number one hormone is inhibin and the other one is activin one is inhibin and the other one is activin both these are also involved in the regulation of 
gonadotropin secretion from the hypothalamus and pituitary etc remember inhibin and activin are also involved in the regulation of pituitary gonadotropin secretion inhibin as its name indicates it causes the inhibition of fs secretion and similarly activin is responsible for the stimulation or increased secretion of fsh from the pituitary so both these are released from the same source i will be discussing its source that mainly these are produced by the granulosa cells i will show you the granulosa cells in the later discussion but remember both are released from the same source but both these carry different or opposing functions inhibin inhibits fs secretion and activin stimulates fs secretion right okay now now we will discuss about the ovarian cycle in the ovarian cycle and ovarian changes that are occur in the normal menstrual cycle there are three phases number 1 is the follicular phase then comes the ovulation and number third is the luteal phase right and after that we will discuss about the endometrial changes that is uterine cycle that are the changes occurring in the uterus mainly and it constitutes two phases number 1 is the proliferative phase and number 2 is the secretory phase remember that the uh, that the follicular phase of the ovaries i have told